This video is a remake of a PowerPoint which I presented to the Tom Green County TGC Historical Society in October of 2010. I used for reference the two books shown on the screen. The green one, Tom Green County Chronicles of Our Heritage Volume 1, was put together by the TGC Preservation League. The other book, Concho Country, was written by Gus Clements. I also went to what is now the Stevens Central TGC Library. There I read Tom Green County Courthouse and Town Clock by Rose Austin. There I also skimmed the index to San Angelo Standard Times May 1884 to December 1889. Captions from that newspaper will be within a red box in this video. So, the title of this video is The Second Stone TGC Courthouse. If the topic is about the second courthouse, then what happened to the first courthouse? Well, in the 1870s, Ben Ficklin began as the county seat with a wooden courthouse. Then a nice stone building was erected. That stone one was only operative for about a year. Why only a year? This is because a massive flood in 1882 destroyed much of the little town. So the building was dismantled and rebuilt as school property for San Angelo. So destructed was Ben Ficklin that the town of San Angelo became the new county seat. Notice on this calendar of 1882 that it took about two months to move all the soggy county records to San Angelo. But where in San Angelo? Well, a wooden courtroom served the county until a permanent courthouse could be built. According to Rose Austin, a notable historian, in a presentation in 1951, an adobe building was also used as a courtroom. Both were near this present day intersection. Now what about the permanent building? In 1884, a contract was awarded. Oscar Ruffini, architect and superintendent had 13 months to complete the building. John and Anton Willicke, stonemasons from West Virginia, had the contract for the stonework. The quarry may have been in the Ben Ficklin area, which is presently near South Bryant in the Loop. By the way, the Standard Times newspaper was printed only for Saturdays. The excerpts from the paper for three weeks in May show how things started off slowly, but at the end of July, rocks began to be hauled to the site, which is at the 100 block of West Beauregard. In August, the newspaper reported progress on foundations and floor joists. Apparently, in November of 1884, a church service was held in a partial building. In 1885, supplies were coming in and the tower was being worked on. By the end of March of 85, the cupola tower was finished. Shown are the floor plans, downstairs and upstairs, made by an insurance company. This map is coded to tell the company about combustible building materials and location of water for fire drenching. You can see how buildings were situated on the corner of Borgard and Irving Streets. It's done! In May, county records could be moved from the Adobe courtroom to the new building. Next item of notice, the town was becoming interested in the town clock for the cupola. As 1885 came to a close, the courthouse was given its finishing touches. The weekly newspaper gave details of the progress. Newsflash! County records described how well water was pumped up to tanks in the attic so that the building would have gravity-fed water pressure. What was the water needed for? Faucets, of course, and the building eventually had water closets. And though there were no sewer pipes at the time, there was something comparable to today's septic tank, only it was called a cesspool. In 1886, it was time to landscape the outside. 
In 1887, apparently the clock was still non-existent. The cupola was empty due to lack of funds. But in May of 1887, a tornado took down the empty cupola. Maybe it was good that they didn't have the clock yet. Here you can see the comparison of the courthouse before the tornado and after the tornado. But repairs due to the tornado happened fast. In later 1887, a clock was finally put into the new cupola. In 1888, this well-known photo was taken as a parade welcomed the completion of San Angelo's railroad terminus. The next few slides are about that clock that was installed in the cupola. We refer back to Rose Austin's presentation where she had interviewed old timers. Number one, the clock was bought after much fundraising. Number two, you had to wind that kind of clock to make it run. Number three, two men, Flanagan and Leffel, apparently had the job through the years. Number four, Mr. Leffel's sons, Maynard and Carl, helped wind the clock. The persons doing the winding would have to climb stairs and ladders to get to the inner room of the cupola. Number six, then there were two cranks to turn, one for the bell and one for the clock mechanism. Rose Austin found out that one time the boys, Maynard and Carl, realized late at night that they had forgotten to wind the clock, which the entire town depended on. So they went there late at night with a lantern to wind it. Somewhere amongst the stairs or ladder, the lantern got juggled around and almost dropped. How horrible it would have been if they had set fire to the courthouse. Maynard and Carl, as grown men, must have been very nervous reminiscing about that night. As years passed, it was decided that the courthouse was not modern enough, so the building was dismantled in 1927. And it is hard to believe, but during the dismantling process, someone stole the clock. The mystery of that stolen clock was never solved. But the stones and bell were reused for a nearby church. So, in 1927, the courthouse was dismantled. Then, in 1928, the third TGC courthouse was built. It was basically built directly over the older one. So, in conclusion, the three courthouses of Tom Green County are shown. I hope you enjoyed this tidbit of history.